Hey, 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 you're now listening or watching the Halos in the Infield podcast with your host Todd Fox and Fernando the Lone Star Halo brought to you in part by Noble L Works just outside of Anaheim Stadium and the Pond or the Honda Center where you can get drink specials just by mentioning Halos in the Infield. Also brought to you in part by 714 Tickets, 714 Tickets, 714 Tickets is a place to go to get 10% off of any ticket purchase just by also mentioning H-I-T-I, Halos in the Infield. Now enjoy the show. To the first edition of James Squared, you know, because there's two of us, with the same name here. Uh, we hope this becomes a theme around here. I'm James Gonzalez, and uh, this is James Malou. How are you tonight? Great, great. Excited for the season. Excited to get 2024 underway, and we have a lot of content for you. So I hope, uh, or for you all, yeah. Yeah, and it, now is it Malou, or is there another it's way Milo. to say your name? Yeah, Milo. it looks like Milau, but it's James Milo. But you can call me Malou, right. whatever. Whatever's easier for you, I don't, I don't really mind. Hi. <laughs> just me it's funny how we have to say our or todd says our last names in our right. programs when we're together when we're yeah. all together so it's funny to think about that uh hopefully everybody's valentine's day went well we're all wearing red uh so there you go with that uh so every week uh we'll bring you programming here here on the halos in, in the infield uh we'll recap the week that was for the angels and then we'll preview the week uh forward for the angels so wednesday into thursday night uh we'll give you you know all the news stats and scores and notes as well so please subscribe and follow halos in the infield on youtube and listen to us on believe for the podcast and wherever you find your podcast so uh, also, I have to mention this, and uh, <laughs> I found my old, uh, you know, cleats or spikes, whatever you call them. Um, so we're going to have our Angels fans uh, softball tournament this Saturday, February 17th, from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Pearson Park. That's on uh, 400 North Harbor Boulevard in Anaheim, 92802. <laughs> So look out for that. Uh, be sure to, uh, you know, DM uh, Heidi for more information. Somebody will get back to you. Uh, so, yeah, bring your cleats, bring your gloves, bats, and uh, give it all you got, you know, because the cameras will be rolling. And uh, for me, I definitely don't want to embarrass myself. So that's why I brought some cleats. Because last time, I think I had running shoes on when I played softball. On I think it was Christmas, honestly, or maybe Thanksgiving. I can't remember when I played last. But yeah, I, I fell right on my ass. I, I threw the runner out, and then I slipped and fell. It was really embarrassing. But James, hope to see you out there and everyone else, part of the Heaty crew, uh, and and we'll bring the shoes and all that. Definitely for that. So yeah, again, the softball tournament. Angel social media fans are just going by. Um, you know, it's what fifteen dollars. We'll give you a shirt. And sign a permit, and then you're ready to go. Again, that's this Saturday, February 17th, 11 to 4 at Pearson Park, 400 North Harbor Boulevard, Anaheim, of course, California. Uh, so the Angels, uh, you know, we'll get to the games and all that later on down the road, uh, James number one or two. Uh, you know, they're starting their third – no, 63rd. Uh, season in the MLB there in Tempe, uh, Arizona at Tempe Diablo Stadium. Uh, it, it's just crazy to think how many years the Angels now uh, have been in the MLB. They've been uh, just predominant, you know, there in Orange County. And we just hope that they, you know, happen to stay there. We hope already sells. But, uh, you know, all the rumors we hear, we haven't heard anything until today, I think. When already mentioned, uh, he's not selling anytime soon. I don't know if you heard that, Malou, but do uh, you have any thoughts on that real quick? Yeah, um, I did hear about that, actually. 
I think all of us have heard about it today. Uh, it was Sam Blum. Uh, I heard this information from on X and it said that um, he's not selling the team and he's going to be around for a little while longer. He's 77 now, so we'll see how long he stays around, but it, it doesn't sound like he's going to sell anytime soon. And I, I know we mentioned, I think, the, the last uh, show that we did with Todd and everybody, um, I said that there was something going on behind the scenes. I still think there is. Uh, I thought, you know, the, the rumor was he was going to sell to Mark Cuban. Uh, apparently that's not true. Uh, maybe it is. I don't know. But, um, yeah, he's sticking around for a while longer, and he's also – planning to make improvements to the Tempe Diablo spring training site in Tempe. And uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, he wants to keep the budget low from mm -hmm. what he was quoted on saying. So I don't know what that means for free agency because we're still in on Snell. Supposedly we're still in on Bellinger and we're still on J JD Martinez. So I don't know what that comment was all about, you know, but I mean, it seems like he just doesn't want to do anything right now. And it's kind of disheartening, disconcerting too. It's like for all of us angels fans. So, um, but it looks like he'll be around for a while longer. I don't know. Yeah. Um, what is this now going to be uh, nine straight years of, you know, missing the postseason? season, uh, yeah. eight years of, you know, being under 500. And uh, we just want a team that, you know, will compete and will, uh, you know, have the best chance to win ball games. And it just seems like it is a tougher job as we transition now to the coaches, the staff for the Angels. And I was really encouraged, you know, forget the results of the scores of the games, okay? Forget about all that. But I was so disheartened by the fundamentals not being done and taught, it seemed like, with the Los Angel staffs, right? Uh, so Ron Washington was signed to a two-year deal to manage the Angels in the offseason. And that's who I wanted from the get-go. I, I thought, like, okay, you're not going to win. Shohei's going to leave. Um, you might as well have all these young kids come up with the tutelage that Washington has, you know, taught so many players from Texas to Oakland, from the Braves the last, you know, however many years, I think uh, since 16 or 17 uh, seasons. So um, he's he's just been a great teacher. And it's I know we always wanted to shot back in managing, and I'm really happy about that. Uh, the bench coach, so May, Ray Montgomery will stay with the Angels here. Johnny Washington is the hitting coach. He was down in uh, San Diego last decade as the hitting coach, and he was just under a lot of scrutiny because of the ballpark, not having a a, uh, a, a really sound lineup to work with. Uh, Barry Enright is the pitching coach. Remember him from the Arizona Diamondbacks, among other teams, as a reliever. Uh, Bull Porter is the first base coach. We know him, of course, from MLB Network. Well, he left the studio 42 to uh, come uh, be the first base coach here. He was uh, the manager before the Astros got really good uh, there in Houston. And then Eric Young Sr. comes over from the Braves with Washington to be the third base coach. And Eric Young Sr., man, in, in his playing days, he was a fast, you know, fast player, uh, really smart with his hitting and base running and fielding. So it's really good to see like the fundamentals kind of being uh, brought here with this, uh, you know, uh, staff here. Steve Carse is the bullpen coach. Remember him, of course, with so many teams uh, being a reliever there. Uh, that's pretty much it for the, the notable names on the staff. I was wanting Clint Hurdle as well, but it seems like he dropped out of it at the last second. Uh, or not the last second, pretty much that day. And then Tory Hunter, of course, was a name, but he dropped out of there as well, I think. So, James, um, thinking of this uh, coaching staff, what do you expect from them? 
Well, I expect fundamentals. I, I expect this team to be fundamentally sound. That's for sure. There's a lot of experience combined with all these these uh, all these great mentors and teachers of the game. You have Ron Washington, of course, Johnny Washington, which I'm really excited about as the heading coach. I think he's going to make a difference with some of these hitters, like the younger ones, like uh, Sean Well and uh, Logan O'Hoppy. I think he, they're really going to benefit from a hitting coach like Johnny Washington. I like the addition of Bo Porter. You know, he's going to straighten out Anthony Rendon. I hope that was that's why he was brought in. He's known Anthony Rendon since he was 13. So I think that's going to make a difference, you know, and this coaching staff's built to uh, with the philosophy of to teach the fundamentals. And that's what the going back to grassroots baseball. And that's what, what this team really needs, you know, building a new philosophy as well. Ron Washington is in there. He's already been working with the minor leaguers at the minor league level at the mm-hmm. complex uh, right before spring training here, uh, teaching his philosophy of uh, getting the fundamentals down and just playing to win, you know, teaching a winning philosophy. You know, he had all those great years with the Texas Rangers, and he brought some of the, those coaches over here. And, I, I you know, I, I can't say enough about this staff. I think this, this team's going to be very – a very good defensive team and fundamentally sound. So we'll see. We'll see what all these coaches bring. But I, I'm I'm excited about. It. I, I wanted to see Tory Hunter just like everybody else did, you know, or Clint Hurdle. I was really pulling for Clint Hurdle as the bench coach, but uh, I hear they couldn't come to an agreement on a contract, which sucks. Already strikes again, pretty much. So <laughs> trying yeah, to go the and Tory ground. Hunter, yeah. So Ari Hunter was a big fan favorite, you know, with the yeah. Angels. It, it was heartbreaking yeah, he was. when he left. And uh, I know just a, lo- a lot of fans from the past loved him. And I think there was, um, yeah, just a disheartening feeling when he was not, uh, you know, where they couldn't get a contract done. That was really unfortunate. I was really shocked by that because I knew how much he was loved here. You know, everybody had his shirt back in the day or jersey. All right, so uh, let's get to some of the roster moves that have happened. Uh, one today, uh, veteran left-hander Drew Pomerantz. He was a starter at first. Uh, he's moved around from San Diego to Boston and other places. Uh, but today, here on uh, Valentine's Day, he was signed to a minor league contract with a non-roster invitation to Major League Camp. Now, there's been some other signings, and we'll get to just every one uh, that has, uh, you know, joined on with the team. Some list of some spring trading invitees. Carson Fulmer hoping to, you know, turn some eyes there for the uh, for the bullpen here. Adam Kolarik, he's also a bullpen guy. Seems like the Angels went out and just signed, you know, whatever reliever that was, yeah. you know, hanging out there. Uh, Jose Marte, who we saw last couple of years, gets sent back down and up and down from Salt Lake to uh, Anaheim. Alan Rangel is another one uh, for the relievers there, uh, for pitchers, I should say. And then for catchers, you have kind of – you kind of have a a little logjam here, but uh, that's where you wish the Angels didn't make those trades last year because you would have had that one young catcher that was traded to – the White Sox in that deal, uh, that would have been great to have him. But, uh, you know, he's gone now. But Francisco Mejia was signed. Chad Wallach uh, stayed with the Angels. Uh, Zach Humphreys and Caleb Hamilton, Juan Flores. We'll see who comes out in spring and who will make the uh, camp there. In the infielders, you know, um, Hunter Dozier I thought was a good small move because he might be – reliable uh he's a veteran so we'll see if he gets any time if he makes the team evan white the first baseman miguel sano is kind of interesting to me because uh you know knowing some twin fans out there that i know um he mentioned you know god he strikes out so damn much but when he gets a fastball he kills him 
but everybody it's like you know Pedro Soriano in Major League when they're going through their oh, yeah. spring training he can hit the fastball but you know enough fastball throw throw breaking balls and he couldn't hit them that's what it felt like with Miguel Sano from the Twins all those years and he's been kind of bouncing around there uh Jake Marinzik is back with the Angels remember him he's kind of a uh he's an outfielder and a good base runner Willie Calhoun the uh, outfield uh out the a veteran outfielder here, Jason Martin. So there's some non uh non roster invitees here, but uh we'll see which ones make an impact in spring training and make it harder for the uh the management, you know, and pairing everybody to make some moves. Uh for the depth chart. So let's get to that because it's it's really coming out to being uh a log jam, let's just say in the outfield. Uh, but we'll start with the the starters, the rotation. So you have Tyler Anderson. He had a bad year, unfortunately. He's in a three year deal, the second year of a three year deal. Okay, so Patrick Sandoval, Reed Detmers, Griffin Canning. All last year they showed glimpses of what they really could be, but then they eventually faltered. Uh, especially uh, Detmers, like. One week he'll have a stuff. The next week he'll fall back to his old form. And I feel like that was Sandoval, but all year long, where he could not get it going. Griffin Canning showed some here and there starts. Trey Silseth, unfortunately, got hit by a ball. But he was pitching very well. Remember that start against the Yankees. Uh, Kenny Rosenberg is trying to get in there as a starter. Uh, Zach Plesak is a, a signing here that... I know he was trying to get back to his old form from the uh, Cleveland baseball team. And then Daniel da- or Davis, Davis Daniel, that's a weird name, uh, together. But uh, who do you see uh, coming out as being the uh, five starters, if there is, for these Angels? Well, you know, I still think it's the usual suspects, you know. I think uh, barring any free agent signing like a Snell, I think – Right now, um, Patrick Sandoval is probably your ace, along with uh, Griffin Canning, Tyler Anderson, Detmers, and Silseth in that starting five of a rotation, and you go into the bullpen. But, I mean, um, I'm looking for Patrick Sandoval to step it up. He had, you know, not not a very good – Season last year, none of them really did, but Canning, yeah. I think Canning was the best one. But uh, I'm looking for a bounce back season from Sandoval. I think um, I think Canning's gonna do very well in his first full season, totally healthy. You know, he had that sol- uh, sh- shoulder issue, I think last year surgery. Um, you know, Anderson's a wild card because you know he had only that one great season with the Dodgers. You know, when he, where he won 15 games and he hasn't been able to produce another season like that. I mean, it's been one one season removed from that that year with the Dodgers, but he did do so well. He gave up a lot of home runs last year. I think the whole rotation did, but especially Tyler Anderson uh, with a bout of bad luck, and then Sel Seth. You know, he's still young, but uh, I think I think this rotation is going to be great. I think it's going to be better under the tutelage of Barry Enright, the new pitching coach who was with uh, the Arizona Diamondbacks last year, the National League champion, Arizona Diamondbacks. So, yeah, this rotation has a lot to learn. Again, this year it's young, um, aside from Tyler Anderson, and I think – I really think it's going to – they're all going to do a lot better than they did last season, you know. I really, I really, I really interesting to see what Silseth and and Griffin Canning do this season. I think they're really going to break out. You're going to see that Detmers is going to be Detmers. Patrick Sandoval just needs to not let his emotions get to him on the mound. Yeah. How many times have we seen in a game where he'll give up a few hits and or a few walks and he just kind of melts down on the mound? I'm hoping that Ron Washington and Barry Enright can uh, kind of quell that for this season because he he does let it he does wear his heart on his sleeve a lot. So, 
And a guy like that reminds me of the closer for the Angels, and we'll get to the bullpen now, Carlos Estevez. Um, Great first half. Damn great first half. Second half, I don't know what the hell happened. And Todd, you know, was one, was maybe the first one to, to point this out on his post game shows, Todd Fox post game show, um, where with a three run lead, a two run lead, he would be fine. He would have that killer instinct. He would get the save and go home happy. Whenever he had to protect the lead or prevent more runs being scored or a tied game, he just didn't have that same mentality. Hopefully, he can he can control that better. But it was just um, really unfortunate to see the way Estevez, you know, uh, just just blew up basically in the second half. What I'm what I'm happy about though, as the rest of the relievers here, Matt Moore came back, and I was hoping he would. Uh, he has what only two pitches, but they seem to all be working well. Uh, the lefty and Jose Soriano is really good. Uh, Sam Backman. Bachman, I'm hoping that he can um, come back healthy and, and provide a, a good spot. You know, he's uh, still pretty young in baseball years, so I'm really happy to see him back. Uh, Jimmy Herget, you know, hopefully he can have some, some consistent days. Uh, it seemed like he would have one or two good ones and then five bad ones. Uh, that's why he wasn't as reliable later in the game. Adam Simber coming over, I think from Cleveland, he's got to show up well and be that veteran presence. Luis Garcia's back and he's older and he gives up the big home runs usually. Robert Stevenson was signed, I believe, to a three year contract. And um, hopefully he can show some veteran presence and maybe be the seventh or eighth uh, inning guy. Jose Suarez, who tried to get that arbitration and the Angels said no. Uh, that was good on the ball club there. Ben Choice, we're hoping, you know, that he can have that, you know, triple digit fastball, you know, coming back to the team and doing well. Uh, and Andrew wants as well, but uh, mainly on the first guys I mentioned, what are you looking forward to with the bullpen? I think we have a lot of good power arms. I'm I'm really excited about this bullpen. Um, it's very very underrated especially with the, the signing of Stevenson. And that was a great signing. I mean, a three-year deal for a guy from the Rays um, who's consistent. I really like that they're keeping, you know, um, people like Zach Plesak possibly as a, a long reliever slash starter or, you know, somewhere in the middle of that bullpen. Um I think he's going to be a veteran presence there. Wants, of course, or Wants, Andrew Wants, <laughs> Soriano. Look at all these power arms. You know, Quejada, when he comes back from his injury, we're going to have Suarez back, who's who could be a long reliever. Um, a lot of power arms. I love, I love that we resigned Matt Moore. Um, he was. He was nails for us last season in that setup role between he and uh, um, um, a closer. What's Stavis. his name? Estevez. Thank you. I couldn't think of his name. Estevez. Um, uh, that's the perfect pair right there. And if Estevez loses his closer role, I think Matt Moore fits right in there, if not Stevenson. Yeah. Um, yeah. A name that we forgot to mention, a uh, Victor Medeiros. You know, he yeah. uh, he was in there for us last year. He could either be a starter or a reliever. Good power arm. You know, we have a lot of good, great arms. Luis Garcia, who was with us in the 2019 season, I believe, which he did all right. But he's back. He has a little more experience now. He's a little older. He's a little more control. Um, all these guys. Big arms, big, big arms, you know, very, very underrated. Not the most sexy names or the most flashy, but guys that can get it done. We need guys that can that can go the distance, you know, especially as relievers. And um, mixed in with the – if our starters can get, get through at least five or six innings, we want them to go six, you know, that's the thing. Um, 
I think these guys can totally bridge the gap. And, you know, Angel uh, fan, us Angel fans should be really excited about this bullpen, you know? Yeah. I'm just worried about getting to the bullpen. That's the big right. chore and having to lead to. Uh, again, it's going to come down to those fundamentals, not making errors, you know, bunting for and out, but moving runners over. You just want to see the fundamentals, like like right. what we're saying. All right, so let's get to the infield and the positions. Okay, so at catcher, we know Logan O'Hoppy is is the guy. He's the captain of, you know, you know, along with Neto there. So he's mm-hmm. fine. But you have Thais, you have Wallach, just like last year. For once in a while, it's been a long time. It feels like it feels like the catching position is kind of set. There's no doubt, like who's number one, who's number two. And then Wallach, you can mix up with someone else, you know, call up someone if there's an injury. Like, there's no doubt who's who. Uh, so let's go to first base. Nolan Shawnee Will, of course, uh, I think was just named the starter for opening day at first base. So we're locked in with him there. Second base, uh, you have Brandon Drury, who had a great year, uh, you know, second to Shohei. But uh, – you could just tell he he was kind of leading the ball club, and whenever Shohei wasn't you know at bat or playing, uh, that he had some clutch hits. He was really good. Luis Ranjifo, you know, up and down year, but he was kind of clutch when he had to be. Michael Stefanik, uh, you know, it seems like he never gets the playing time, uh, you know, just because of his maybe not as well as a fielder, uh. But he's shown he he can hit. There can be some times where he hits for average. But maybe the fielding will be better with the tillage of, you know, Washington and Eric Young Jr. We'll see what happens there. Uh, At third base, of course, you have Anthony Rendon. Uh, Let's see if he gets past, you know, June without an injury that will, you know, sit him out for the rest of the year. I know you mentioned, uh, was it Bo Porter? has known him for a while and that can set him straight a little bit. Uh, At shortstop, of course, you have Zach Nettle, but Ranahifo and Kyron Paris is also there. I know that's Nettle's spot, uh, but just in case of an injury, you do have Ranahifo who can play, you know, also the outfield, but also the infield as well. Um, I guess other from first base. I don't think he's played first base, but uh, how do you feel about this infield? at each position. Well, I, you know, I think we're pretty solid. We have a a good mix of veterans and younger players. Um, I like to see another season of Zach Neto. I mean, he's, he's brand new. So we'll see if he goes into a sophomore slump, you know, he only played because of his injury, not even half a season. So I'm, I'm curious as to, how he's going to take his sophomore season, but I, I like it. I mean, he's, he's going to be a premier shortstop if he keeps doing what he's doing. Luis Renjifo, you know, he, he's solid. Uh, he's good for about 10 to 15 homers, and he has good hands. Sean Well, he's brand new, straight out of college. Um, pretty solid at first base we saw that he could hit a lot of line drives and and hit for some power but his power is still developing stefanik of course on the bench he saw it he's he was like a uh he's like he reminds me of david fletcher in a lot of ways he could play anywhere uh rendon of course if he is healthy that's the key if he doesn't break our hearts this year and go go back on the DL, I know everybody hates Rendon, but he is or was once was the the top third baseman in the game at one time. So if he's fully healthy, look for him to man the you know the, the hot corner and do very well. I you know I was never a big fan of him throwing sidearm to first base. He always makes errors, mm-hmm. but we'll see. We we also have Kyron Paris backing up at short. If Neto goes south, we have Drury, uh, veteran presence at second. He can also play a little short, a little first base if need be. I really like the Sinfield's versatile. And I think with 
the tutelage of Ron Washington, who is an infielder guru. Mm-hmm. You know, he cut his teeth on playing the infield, even as a player. He was one of the, the more elite defenders in the league. And he was he was coming up, and he was younger playing Major League Baseball. Uh, I think he's really going to make a difference. He's going to teach these guys the fundamentals. I think they're going to be more fundamentally sound defensively than we have seen in the past. So I, I'm looking for this infield to do some good things, even with we don't have any really big names, but Anthony Rendon, you know. Yeah. So um, I think through coaching, I think this infield has uh, – I think it's going to be – has the potential to be very, very good. You All know, right. I'm just not so, like yeah. Get it too late. Yeah, go for it. Um, so there's really no position battles really there. I think we're set. You know, Ohapi, Shanuel, um, right. Drury, or Renhifo, and you put uh the DH uh Drury maybe and put Renhifo at second, yeah. Neto at short, Rendon at third. Uh, we'll see if there's another signing for a DH, hopefully, but probably not. Uh, that's why I'm wondering what's going to happen with the DH spot. But we mentioned position battles. So the outfield, it's just other from Trout and center, left and right. I mean, who do you go with? I'm sure you have the list in front of you. What I'm guessing, yeah, you have Moniac and right. And Taylor Ward in left, maybe Hicks has his DH some days. Uh, Joe Odell on, you know, the uh, getaway days gets some playing time. You also have Marinzik, of course, and then um, uh, who's the other guy? I forget. Uh, Kyron Paris, who came up for a cup of coffee last year. Uh, it, it's just a logjam when you think about it in left and right field. So uh, we know Trout, and eventually Trout. Look, I, I don't know what you do with that. Uh, maybe you can tell me after. But do you do you see Trout? You know, you know, staying in center until he tells him to, or you know, eventually does he say, you know, I I can't move as fast. Can I play in right field or be the DH some days? But. Uh, for sure, he's in center field now, and hopefully he has a better year. I know he was talking to people about, hey, I'm hoping for a better year, and I feel good and all this and all that, but it's a long-ass season. So in left field, uh, speaking of a position battle, who would you you know, go with? Well, right now you got to go with Taylor Ward because he's earned that, I think. Uh, he's coming back from his his uh, facial injury. He's 100% as of today. That was reported today. Good. Um, but I do think he's going to platoon a little bit with Aaron Hicks. I think Aaron Hicks is going to move all around that outfield because he can pr- play pretty much anywhere, but he's mostly a left fielder. Um, see, w- we went from – or, uh, you know, we got rid of some of our outfielders. We went from not having many outfielders to having an abundance of outfielders again with, with this this upcoming season. But uh, you're going to see Adele in there. You know, they're going to plug him in. But the, the one person we're not talking about much is Jordan Adams. Where does he fit in to this whole mix? And he could be playing a left field some days, too. I think he starts the season triple A in triple a salt lake but um and i think adele's gonna start in triple a too this is adele's last chance i think as an angel to prove himself but i think you're gonna see the opening day outfield of mickey moniac and right trout and center and taylor ward and left that's my gut with uh aaron hicks on the bench and possibly odell adele um on the bench as well, but I'm sure he's going from Triple A to back to Triple A again. At some point, you're just gonna have to leave him up because this is his last chance. I think he's running out of options too. So yeah, no we'll see. But um, yeah. yeah, it's 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 gonna be interesting to see what Ron Washington does with his lineup. He did say today that 
he likes a stable lineup, unlike we've seen with Phil Nevin or Mike Sosha or even Joe Madden in the past. He likes to keep his his lineups pretty solid. So uh, that's going to be oh, very good yeah. for this Angels club, I think. That's one thing I heard about Sean Will. You Not hear about only that? will he be, yeah, he'll be the first baseman and then he will yeah. lead off. So that's pretty cool. That tells you, hey, you got someone for years to come. And, you know, I know Todd mentioned this, and and I kind of grew fond of this too, where, hey, he's not trying to kill the ball every damn time. You know, he's not going for the 400-foot home runs. He is getting on, whether it's by walk. Remember, he had that big streak of getting on. You know, he's getting on by walk. He's getting on by, you know, a single, 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 base hit. A double, you know, so it's not like um, he's worthless. He's coming up and maybe it's the, you know, it's those, uh, you know, metal bats. The reason why he was hitting balls out. But up here, he's doing fine with the wooden right. bats and he's getting on base. And I just I just want to see him continue that. And I just love that, you know, Wash already has a confidence in him, you know, being one of the young guys, you know, the Angels now for what third straight year brought up a guy that they drafted that year and that's just the way you know things are right now yeah why not i mean it's worth a shot given trying to pretty much give a shot in the arm to this team you know and so far it's, it's kind of worked out a little bit i mean these guys are getting experience and sean well as he was one of the best first baseman in college nationally. So, you know, it just made sense. He was killing it in, I think, double A with the trash pandas before he was called up. I don't even think he got the triple A. I think he just brought him up. Right. All right. So let's get to the top 10 remaining remaining free agents in MLB. Uh, Let's just say you were the GM or you were the owner and you said, hey, just sign, sign whoever you need to, who you think you would. So Blake Snell, you mentioned, Jordan Montgomery, uh, Clevenger, and Ryu. Out of all those starters, uh, who would you sign for the Angels this year? This year, I'd still go with Snell. He's your best. We need a We need an ace. And Snell fits, checks the boxes on that. And you, you just got to go out and get him somehow. He's demanding $200 million Nope. For the last, for the next nine years or so. Uh, they're trying to get that down. But, I'm, I mean, we need an ace. And that's the guy you go after. My number two would be Jordan Montgomery. Mm-hmm. I think he'd be very serviceable. But I think Snell fits more of – what the angels are trying to do is a lefty. We we could potentially have mostly a lefty rotation. I know. I, did I don't like season. that though. And that's weird. Yeah, I don't like it either because you need that balance between righty. Um, right. Position player wise, there's also Matt Chapman out there. Mm-hmm. That's kind of intriguing in case you know uh, Rendon goes down. Matt Chapman could be a cheaper um, option for this team. I mean, he still hits a ton, but he just doesn't hit for uh, much of an average, but he, yep. he could hit some home for you. Um, local boy uh, out of Cal State Fullerton. I'd be happy to see. Uh, I'm a former Titan myself. So, oh, that's uh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be happy to see Matt Chapman. Yeah. So, I know Grill uh, would that. Be- and there's, oh yeah, oh bro, master, oh, really? don't get us started with that. Nope, nope. <laughs> He'd be ecstatic. We wouldn't hear the end oh. of that. But um, there's options out there. I mean, pitching wise, the Angels need pitching still. Yep. We need an ace. So Snell, I'd go with Snell. You know? Okay, you look at you look at Bellinger, you look at JD Martinez, yeah. and then Whit Merrifield is already 35 years old. I didn't yeah. know that. I thought he was like 31, 32. Man, so how time flies. Um, my guess is that they don't get any starting pitchers, but you know, Jordan Montgomery is out there. He's working out in Boston. 
His wife is doing work in Boston. I think right. it's just a matter of time uh, when he's signed by the Red Sox or he goes back to the uh, Rangers. But Rangers. I, I'm still ho- I'm hoping that the Angels somehow you know get the okay from Marty. But this is all fiction, of course. Right. Uh, so I figured J.D. Martinez would be the only guy the Angels sign. He could be that DH every you know pretty much every day and really yeah. round out the lineup. That would be the only real signing I think that could happen for the Angels. Uh, I, I'm guessing the same with you here with with that. Out of Chapman, Bellinger, Martinez, Merrifield, who do you think in, in real life here, this is real life, who do you think they would be able to sign or want to sign? But it all depends on Artie. We all know that. But, mm-hmm. you know uh, – Bellinger, I think, I just like you, I think it's going to be J.D. Martinez. I think Bellinger go, ends up going back to the Cubs. That makes wow, the most yeah. sense. Uh, but J.D. Martinez, if we want to go to a full-time DH, and we need that power, he, we need someone to you know replace Shohei's production, and he'd be perfect. He's consistent. And he hits 30. He averages about 30 homers a year. So – that would make the most sense for the Angels right now. Bellinger, we already have a crowded outfield. You know, we have Adele still in the wings. I just don't think it's going to happen. He plays center field primarily. We already have two center fielders and Moniak and Trout and Joe Adele. Yeah. Um, so I think J.D. Martinez in the D.H. spot as a D.H. makes the most sense for the Angels. Uh, I like Whit Merrifield. He can play all positions in the infield pretty much. Um, Of course, Chapman, I mentioned already. Um, There's some intriguing possibilities that haven't been signed, which is quite surprising. But remember, most four of those guys are um, Scott Boris guys. So... (laughs) They're gonna. He's gonna demand the most money out of you know. He's gonna get the most money for his players. And you right. know the Angels don't like dealing with Scott Boras much. No, especially Artie it, Moreno. It's good that he's on the side yeah. now. You know, toward the uh, um, the visitors dugout, he's not right behind on plate, yes. just staring at right. you the whole game. That's a really good thing. All right, so let's let's go into some fun here to end the show. So. You know, spring training is here, of course. And if you're going this year, just a reminder, the team mentioned, hey, there's going to be some construction going on. There's some phases to this Tempe Diablo Stadium construction. So some sites you would see, you won't be able to. So just look out for that when you go to Tempe. I don't know if I will. I know you will. I went back in 21 as we talk about our past experiences and – I thought it was cool. You know, I, I went for a weekend and, um, you know, seeing the players warm up and all that, uh, going to Tempe Diablo, sitting down the line. The only bad part pretty much was the, the weather that, you know, that I brought from L.A. to uh, Arizona. It literally followed us, you know, up the down, you know, down the tent or whatever to Tempe uh, for that Friday into or Thursday into Friday or whatever it was. Um, but yeah, to seeing not only that game, but going the next day to see the Giants in Cleveland, you know, visiting different ballparks. Uh, I think I would try to do that again, but go to like as many games as I could, you know, every day go day and night, not only to the Angel games, but to other stadiums. So uh, the amenities were all right. You know, um, just the, the access, I think sometimes is, can be a little better but you could just tell that whole metropolis there of like spring training uh facilities it's just amazing uh i guess hey what was your past experiences like of your spring training uh days oh I, you know i love i go every year i've been going everywhere since or every year since 2010 basically i i think i skipped one year Somewhere in there, but um, I even went the time where they canceled spring training in 2020. 
due to the COVID pandemic. And that was interesting. I still went when they shut everything down. We were like an hour out. We were driving and we were an hour uh, we were an hour out and they canceled the whole, the rest of spring training and half that season. So uh, that was an experience. But the thing about spring training is the experience, the feeling that I like the most is that everyone's on the same page, much like, you know, the first day of the season where everyone's in first place. Everyone's just happy about their teams. You go to, there's a ballpark in uh, every city pretty much in the Phoenix area. And it's just an overall great feeling. Everyone's just so excited. You know, people just want to see some games. They're meaningless games, but they have a lot of meaning to the fans in those ballparks. And every year I, I go and talk to people, I just hang out with people, I, I meet up with people, Angels people, Dodgers people, what what have you, just baseball people. And you know, it's 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 a great time each and every time that you go out to Tempe or Mesa or the surrounding cities out there. And I just enjoy it. You know, I'm going out there this in a few weeks actually. Uh, March 8th through the 11th. So, yeah, it's a, it's an experience. If you ever, you've never experienced spring training, you have to. It's a, it's a baseball fan's paradise. And I've only been to spring training here on the West Coast. But I can imagine, you know, on the East Coast, it's just as great. And, you know, it's... I know uh, it's really spread out in Florida. I mean, it's... Yeah, it's you have to go up and down the coast. Map I saw, yeah. Uh, we'll see if I go this year. I, I highly doubt it. Uh, but you gotta yeah, do it. I, I, yeah, I'll see what happens. But I, uh, I know that's where I met you. I think in person for the first time, or maybe at Angels game before. But we, we were at that one bar or wherever it was. I, I forget where in Tempe. I think it was Tempe. oh the tailgate. Yeah, that's it. Shout out to that place. That place was really cool. It had you know pool tables and. You know, some interesting people definitely there. It depends what time you go, I guess. Anyway, uh, hey, thank you for coming on here. James, number one, I'll be number two. Uh, and thank you for James everybody Squared. who watched James Squared, as uh, yeah, Malou mentions here. Uh, be sure to follow uh, and sub and like uh, Heedy on you know YouTube and then listen on Believe and other podcasts. Uh, forms out there. Any last words, uh, James, number one? I'm just ready for the season. I know we're going to be doing this pretty much weekly. Uh, you'll get used to us, so don't worry. We'll have a lot of good content for you. I hope. Uh, it, it's a pleasure being on here with you, James. I know we've we've talked about this before, even last year, getting together and doing, doing this and um, – I think it's going to be a good season. I'm excited for the spring and uh, whatever Angels baseball brings us, you know. Yeah. So. I'm trying to stay positive, but uh, yeah. I just know eventually the games won't go our way. But the, again, fundamentals. Let's just end with that fundamentals on our side on their side on everybody's side hopefully everyone everybody will be fundamentally sound that's all we can ask for all right thank you for watching everyone and we'll see you next time take care see you later go halos hold on